Hey everyone, Wrath of the Lich King introduces a lot of changes to the game, from minor things that will make your everyday life a little bit better, to major class changes that will save you hours of hassle in raids or otherwise. Today I compiled a list of 15 of those changes, from quite useful to absolutely game changing. So without further ado, let's get into it. At number 1 we have a change that will make everyone's life easier. So if you've ever played Classic or TBC up until now and have played a class that provides a manual buff, you know how annoying it is to buff your whole rate, because you need to cast it on 5 different players or god forbid 8 in Classic. But not just that, if you're raiding as any class and happen to die at any point in the raid, you know the frustration which is not receiving that one last buff you need. Well, Wrath solves that, because now every manual raid buff, be it Arcane Brilliance, Gift of the Wild, Prayer of Fortitude and so on will affect the whole raid. The way it worked in Classic and TBC is you had to manually target a player and then that player's whole party which you cast the buff on would receive the buff. Now in Wrath it's just a spell that you click and it gives it to the whole raid. Saves a lot of hassle and also a lot of mana. Speaking of mana, that's number 2. In Wrath of the Lich King, mana issues for DPS are no longer a thing. Well, except for Arcane Mages because that's kind of the whole gimmick of the class. But outside of that, no matter what class you're DPSing with, you will not run out of mana anymore. That's mainly because it's just way easier to keep up buffs that regen mana up on bosses now, and also because abilities straight up cost less mana overall. For healers though, mana issues are a bit hit or miss, but you can definitely make it way way better, with well-timed raid cooldowns like Mana Tide, Hymn of Hope, or Innervate. And it depends from fight to fight of course, but overall, you're still very much trying to preserve your mana as a healer, unlike a DPS. Number 3. This is a feature that will save you a lot of hassle while questing. The integrated quest helper. This made it to the game in Wrath and it basically shows you very clearly and very easily where your quest objective is and what you need to do to finish it. We've had add-ons that try to emulate this over the years in Classic, like Questy, but the quest helper that Blizzard made is far more superior in my opinion. And this will probably save you hours worth of hassle while leveling or or when doing any quests really. To stay on the topic of leveling, number 4. Riding receives a lot of awesome changes in Wrath. First off, you can now learn the first riding skill at level 20 instead of 30, the fast ground speed at 40 instead of 60, and the first flying skill at 60 instead of 70. And this one gives 150% flying speed instead of the super slow 60% we had in TBC. All of those skills are also way cheaper too, allowing you to level up super fast and efficient. Unfortunately, Artisan Riding, the 280% speed one, doesn't receive any changes. It's still 5k gold and you can only get it at level 70. However, the Northrend Riding skill, Cold Weather Flying, can not only be trained at level 77, so 3 levels before max, but you can also learn it as early as level 68 if you buy an account bound book which unlocks after you buy this skill the first time. So leveling in Wrath is truly a really enjoyable experience not only for this reason, but also because of the heirlooms which we talked about in our first video about wrath changes. Number 5. On the topic of mounts. This is more of a tip than a change, but I'll include it here anyways. If you reach level 77 and you happen to have no gold to buy a flying skill, because Ice Crown and Storm Peaks are very much designed to have a flying mount and you can't really go around them without, well, there's this goblin NPC outside K3 which will loan you a flying mount of your own. This goes at 150% speed and can only be used in Storm Peaks, Ice Crown and Sholazar Basin. So there you go. Number 6. A change that is not only useful for leveling, but also for traveling in general. Meeting stones now no longer have any level requirements. Well, they kinda do still, but you only need to be level 15 minimum to use any stone in the world. This will save a lot of time and hassle to a lot of players. And I can already see players with multiple accounts parking two of their characters at every corner of the world to create a summoning network. Much welcome change. Number 7. If you're in a guild right now, or you've ever been in one since Classic, you're probably used to signing up to raids using Discord. And you've also probably missed a couple signups, and people in your guild probably do miss them every week too. Because it's Discord and we don't pay attention to every channel on every server we're on. Well, you don't have to do that anymore because Wrath introduces the in-game calendar. With this, you can easily have your guild sign up to events in-game without having to use Discord at all. And create 
creating an event on the calendar and inviting people to it will make the calendar icon blank for everyone. So there's no excuses anymore, unless people literally only raid log. So yeah, this should make raid signups for your guild much easier for everyone. Unfortunately, pugs and GDKPs will still have to use Discord for signups, but that's a different story. Number eight, tab art. In classic and TBC, faction tab arts are only obtainable once you reach exalted with a given faction and serve kind of like a token to show off that you're exalted and nothing more really. In Wrath, however, tab arts serve a completely different purpose and everyone will want to buy them at some point. Because in Wrath, tab arts are equivable all the way from friendly and they allow you to gain reputation with that faction up to exalted by doing any kind of level 80 dungeon. So that's every heroic dungeon and four normal dungeons. Unfortunately, those tab arts only exist for the four main factions in Wrath and not for things like Sons of Hodir or Kaluak. So doing dailies is still on the menu for those. But still, this should help you reach Exalted a lot faster with those factions. Number nine. In Wrath, you will get a lot of currency throughout the expansion, starting from the emblems of heroism all the way to emblems of frost and even going through things like Dalaran cooking awards or Dalaran jewel crafters tokens. So that's a lot of stuff to keep in your bags that will take a lot of space. Thankfully, Wrath introduces the currency tab to allow you to save a lot of bag space. This doesn't only apply to wrath currencies, but even older ones like badges of justice or each one of the battleground marks. So the minute wrath free patch becomes a thing, you should see a lot more bag real estate free up for you. Number 10, training dummies. They're finally a thing in wrath and they're definitely a very welcome change. Throughout classic and TBC, I'm sure you're familiar with the hassle you had to go through to level up your weapon skills or simply to test your class abilities. So you had to go clear Dire Mold North to be able to hit those ghost ogres at the end or go to that pit lord on the top of Black Temple, which was way less ideal because you couldn't just AFK. Big, big hassle. So yeah, Wrath adds those training dummies around each major city in Azeroth and those will help you not only level up your weapon skills, but also actually test things that you could only test against boss enemies or big AoE packs. Because there's actually boss type enemies and small packs of mobs too here, as well as regular level 60, 70 and 80 training dummies. So you can test pretty much everything you could ever think of. Number 11, profession linking. This will be a big help to anyone who ever wanted to look for work through trade chat or link a recipe or otherwise to a friend or a guildie. Because in Wrath, you can very easily and quickly link your own personal profession in any channel so that players know exactly what you have and don't have. This will make advertising your services way easier in trade chat and to let your guildies know what you have and don't have. I would even see an add-on being made for this for players to automatically link their profession in guild chat every time someone asks for a profession that someone has. I don't know if profession linking is possible through the API, but if it is, there's an idea for an add-on. Number 12. To stay on the topic of professions, enchanting will become a way easier profession to make money with. And that's thanks to Vellum. Those new items are made by scribes with very few reagents and they will allow any enchanter to put their enchants on the vellum itself and be able to trade it to other players by mail and of course through the auction house. This will allow a lot of players to make much more gold with enchanting. Because up until now the only way was to spam trade chat until someone whispered you and get them to trust you enough to give you the reagents to enchant their item for them and vice versa if you're a buyer. So this should make it way easier. Of course, this takes away from the social aspect of the game, yada yada, but honestly, 99% of enchanting transactions I've been through were done with only two to three whispers, and I've never seen that person ever again. So I don't think that's taking away that much, really. Number 13. You probably remember this, but Wrath was the expansion that introduced the vendor mount, the Traveler's Tundra Mammoth. And this is accessible to everyone, given you have 16,000 gold. This is basically the biggest gold sink in the game and a big big investment to any serious gold farmers or bots. <laughs> However, repair robots are still a thing in the game and they're easier and cheaper to make than ever. So if you're an engineer, you really don't need this mount at all. And we've already talked about the fact that everyone should go engineering in Wrath. That being said, it's still a very useful mount to have because the repair bots only last 5 minutes and have a 15 minute cooldown. Number 14. Speaking of engineering, engineers get access to 
Molly, their own portable mailbox that they can drop anywhere in the world and access their mail. Or in fact, for everyone to access their mail. Because you can use it even if you're not an engineer yourself or haven't dropped it yourself. This is the next best thing for gold farmers because as you know, the mailing system is basically an infinite inventory for all your characters. So instead of buying the mammoth to sell your junk, you could also just drop a mailbox and mail everything to one of your alts. Very very useful feature that is a welcome change in Wrath. And finally, number 15. Here's something I guarantee you forgot about Wrath. Of course, we all know about the Dungeon Finder, which Blizzard confirmed in the Wrath announcement that it isn't going to be a thing in Classic Wrath. But did you know about the Raid Browser? This works very similarly to the old LFG tool from TBC. You know, the one we currently have and that no one uses. And it allows you to choose any raid in the game, from Molten Core to ICC, and list yourself with others while waiting for an invite from someone. This will probably probably be kept in the game, because why not, but obviously, just like the current LFG tool we have in TBC, I don't see this getting much use at all. It's already hard enough to fill a 5-man dungeon with the LFG tool, let alone a whole raid. And it's got to do with the way these types of tools work. It should be the players looking for groups and not group makers looking for players. That's why LFG bulletin board is so much better. And that's pretty much everything I have for you today. Those were 15 more things that I thought about since the first video we've made, which you can check by clicking on the info bubble on the top right now if you want. But if you guys know more stuff like this that made it to Wrath, please drop it in the comments to help out your fellow Classic WoW players, and I may include it in another similar video in the future. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to give it a like and subscribe to the Classic WoW Curios channel for more content like this. My name is Numidia and I will see you guys in the next one very soon. Bye for now.